Hi everybody, Frog here, and today I'm going to teach you how to do uh, this lovely campfire painting. Uh, the first step you'll need is to gather your supplies um, and find a space that you can do some painting on. Um, I'd recommend putting down like a plastic tablecloth or newspaper. Um, I happen to be painting outside on a table that um, I can get a little paint on and not worry about. Um, but what you're going to need is a canvas. Um, so this one here is 8 by 10 um, and you could also use cardboard or a board, um, really anything that you have. Um, and then you're going to want a whole rainbow of paint colors. Um, so in here I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, white, and brown. Um, and then you're going to want a variety of paintbrush sizes and water and some paper towels. You're going to want to make yourself a little paint palette and I'm just using some scrap um, cardboard that I happen to have. Um, and so I put some of the colors I'm going to use first down on it. Um, and then what you're going to want to do with it with a canvas is you want to kind of wet it down first. It helps the paint flow a little bit. If you're using cardboard or um, wood, you don't want to do that because it'll absorb the water differently. Um, do all the sides of it so that also cleans it off a little bit. Okay, so the first uh, bit of painting um, is that we're going to do the background sky and um, you can just do this however you want. Um, you could put, I'm going to do um, blues and blacks, but you could put rainbow colors back there and make it more of a, like an oceany sunset kind of a thing. It's really um, up to you. But what I'm going to do is I, uh, I'm going to take um, blue and black, hopefully you can see that, and um, I'm going to start at the top of my canvas and go about three quarters of the way down because I'm going to put some ground in there. Um, but I do two colors at once because then I can kind of blend them in um, and make them match a bit more. Um, with canvases, you want to do the edges as well um, so that they match up. Um, but you're going to keep doing that. And then you can add in some other colors. I use one brush for this. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can um, use multiple, of course, but it does blend quite nicely and gives you that look of the night sky. My camera cut out for a second, um, so I have started doing the ground and I put, um, the stars on before I did that and I will show you that in just a second but um, I'm doing the ground and I'm doing um, black and brown and that same kind of two colors on my brush at one time but you can do one color at a time and just overlap them see how there's two colors there um, whatever works best for you okay so I finished um, doing the ground here hopefully you can see that's a little black and brown um, and then I will show you how I did these stars since my uh, camera cut out um, when I was doing those. So usually you would do those before you do the ground, um, but it, it's okay if you don't. Um, you may just get a little bit of stars in your dirt, but you can cover them up. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your white paint, um, and I should be saying that I've been using acrylic paint for this. Temper paint probably would work, um, so if you have acrylic paint, um, that's your best bet. So I got my brush, and it's a little bit wet, and I'm going to put it in, put my white paint on my palette and mix a little bit of that wetness into it and then I'm going to take my finger along the brushes and just um, flick on it and it's okay like I just got a shooting star in mine and that's uh, great so um, it's kind of messy that one um, so if you don't feel like flicking it or you don't like getting uh, paint on you you can um, just dab it on with you know, like the end of your paintbrush or um, whatever you would like so those are my stars you're going to want to let your background dry uh, fully before we do the next part so you don't mix those colors. And you can see uh, mine definitely saw some wet spots where it's a little bit shinier. Um, so let that dry five or so minutes. Um, if you're impatient, you could use a hair dryer. And uh, I'll be back in a second to go over the next steps. Our next step is to um, put the moon on. So you're going to want to take your white paint 
and uh, put that on your uh, paint palette. And then um, I'm still using this wide square uh, brush um, to do that. Also, if you think that my background looks a little bit different, it does. I uh, spilled something on it that I didn't like, so I painted over it and then put new stars on. So uh, that's the beauty of the point where we are right now, is if you don't like it, you can just paint right over it. So anyway, you're going to take your uh, wide brush, or the widest brush you have, um, or a small brush would work too, and um, put your white paint, and then I just put it down on my canvas, and then kind of try to keep it centered. And... Um, make as close to a circle as possible and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we don't know if the moon is an actual circle um also you could put a little yellow in that if you wanted to um whatever you want um is fine so I'm trying to get some of the extra paint off of mine because i got a little too much on there so that is the moon um and while that is drying I'm going to go ahead and um, start working on the trees um, and there are uh, definitely different ways you could paint your trees um, and I'm going to make kind of trees that look like uh, cedar trees so they kind of swoop um, down <laughs> and apologize for my dog he is uh, very excited by my cat at the moment <laughs> so anyway I've got um, a couple different colors of green here um, I've got kind of a olivey green, a dark green, and like a lighter green. And then I'll probably also use maybe a little black in there um, just to uh, get it nice and... Uh, don't want the trees to be the most visible um, item that we have. Uh, I'm making a little dark green on my side of my palette here. Um, you probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm mixing um, black with a bit of my uh, bright dark bright grassy green color um, just so I get kind of a dark green and then what I'm just gonna do is start doing little swoops um, and you can make your trees as big or as little as you want you can put as many on there as you want as long as you leave room um, to do your fire so anyway I'm starting with this darker color and I'm probably gonna do two or three trees um, and then intermixing into this dark color, I'm gonna grab um, some of these brighter colors and um, make some swoops with them. And I'm just gonna keep doing this till I get a tree I like. I'm kind of trying to keep a center line here without painting a trunk, but if it's easier for you to paint a trunk, um, go ahead and do that. Um, but use some even brighter greens just to kind of mix them in there. Um, and that's why you want your background uh, dry before you do this part because otherwise you'll get uh, green and blue mixing in. So I've got my uh, trees painted on there. I went with two. Um, I thought about putting another little third one on there, but um, I like how the two look for now. I can always go in and add a third one later, um, but I am going to let it dry uh, just like we did with the background before because um, otherwise it'll be hard to uh, paint without smearing the tree um, but I want to show you kind of up close here sorry about the camera turn there um, how I tried to get as much of the background to not show through the tree there's a little bit in there um, but the different layers of paint also had a little texture you can see it's a little bit raised up um, so again let that dry you can use a hair dryer if you want to um, and then we'll come back and we will put our logs and our fire on um, while my trees are drying, um, I wanted to show you my paint palette. It's kind of a mess because I was trying out my uh, moon and then uh, had some extra blue in my brush here. Um, but I just wanted to show you that I am, um, I don't have all the colors necessarily of paint that I need. And so I've been mixing them. So like to make the dark green right here, I just use some of this brighter green and mix some black in. And then I'm getting ready for the logs. And so um, I don't have any light brown but I want some light brown. So I make some white and, uh, and bright brown. And then right here, um, I don't have dark brown. So I made some dark brown with some black and um, that light brown color. So if you don't have quite the colors you need, but you have the colors you can uh, mix in, uh, go ahead and do that. And again, you don't have to follow my color patterns here. You can um, make it however you want. Um, so have fun. So my trees are um, mostly dry. There's a couple 
uh, wet, wetter blobs that I'm just going to try to avoid. But what I'm going to do right now is um, paint the logs for my fire. Um, and so I'm going to use those three different browns um, that I made. I'll probably start with this darker one. Um, and I'm going to make kind of three logs. And I'm just going to use the darker color to kind of map out where I want them. Because um, I want my fire to kind of go in this space here. Um, so I'm going to have one log about here. And it's okay if you can't see it very well because I'm purposely using the darker color just so I've got some uh, guides of where I want it to be. And then I'll start adding in the um, brighter colors. So I've got my uh, lighter brown I'm going to put on there. And a lot of this is just about uh, layering colors um, to give it whatever kind of look you want, realistic, or you could, you know, make them super bright colors and look more cartoony if you'd want. put some different layers in there to make mine. I'm going to try to keep them kind of squared off on the edges there just because um, I'd like my logs to be a little bit straighter edged. Um, but again, you can do whatever you want for these good thing about painting and arts and crafts is that a lot of it is the artist's choice. So I'm going to kind of put some round ovaly shapes at the bottom of mine um, and that uh, is going to be the edge of my logs. Um, and so I'm going to probably get a smaller brush actually. Um, yep, smaller one here would be good. Um, and I'm going to take some of my darker color and I'm going to kind of outline those. Um, just so you can see the slight definition on the edge of uh, the wood here. And then uh, I'll probably also use that same color to edge the um, sides of my logs here. Okay, and then I'm going to start just kind of layering in some colors. Kind of use that same method I did with the trees, just some little uh, swoops to kind of give the appearance of bark and wood texture. Um, so really you can do whatever on it that you want. Um, I might also do a little bit of swirls in here to kind of give that um, tree ring look. Um, and it's okay if the tops aren't perfect because you're going to put a fire up there. Um, but keep doing that until you get the effect you want. Okay, before I did my fire, I decided I wanted uh, to add some uh, glow rings outside my moon. Um, so I took one of my brighter blues and a sort of wet brush. And I'm just kind of uh, swooping up some color around. Uh, you could use white if you want to. Um, but just to give uh, the look of the, of the moon kind of doing some outer glow. Um, yeah, try a little white and add a little that brightness in there. Um, so you can leave that step off if you want, but um, I just kind of wanted it to have a little uh, different effect. Um, so I'm going to use... Uh, red, orange, and yellow. I happen to have a couple different uh, colors of those um, on hand, but you can again mix if you want different uh, hues of that. Um, but I'm just going to start a little bit with a 
yellow and this is why again you want your background to be very dry because uh, otherwise if you're mixing yellow onto black or blue you're going to get some really uh, murky colors um, but I'm just going to start making a kind of campfire shape um, and it can be whatever you want it to be um, this is just kind of the, the base and the foundation um, and it's okay if it goes over your trees. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint that in and then start layering on other colors. Uh, so stay tuned. Okay, so here is our uh, finished painting. And the last thing um, you're gonna wanna do is um, sign it with your name or your initials or whatever your artist uh, mark is. So I uh, made a little gray paint so it would show up um, on here. But my initials are uh, C and A, so I'm going to uh, paint those in the corner here so that I can take credit for my lovely art. So uh, thank you all for joining me and um, I hope that you uh, create some lovely artwork of your own. And if you do, post it on your social media and tag at Camp Coloqua in it. Um, we'd love to see what kind of art you come up with. Hey, have a good day, everybody.